remoteness and natural beauty of Maine's islands attract people from all over the world, and one of the best ways to enjoy them is from the air. But for the folks who live on Matinicus, an island 20 miles out to sea, these planes have been a lifeline since the 1950s. You have groceries, you have your medication, you have uh, everything that you need comes by air. Good morning, Penobscot Island Air. Kevin, may I help you? Kevin Waters is the owner and operator of Penobscot Island Air, the air service that flies to Matinicus and pretty much anywhere else that you need to get to in the Penobscot Bay area. His fleet of four single-engine Cessna planes is in constant motion all day, every day, to keep the islanders connected to the outside world. This is considered an on-demand air taxi. So instead of necessarily being scheduled routes, people call you, hey, you know, I need to go from here to there or something happened. You know, the schedule that starts at 7 in the morning or 6 in the morning is out the window at 6.30. And, you know, you just need to react to it and, and get it done. Helping Kevin get it done is a staff of seasoned pilots. There's Rich Wright, who started flying planes for the military in 1966. And then there's Rod Burrows, a former Alaskan bush pilot. And Don Campbell, who's a, a military veteran from Desert Storm. These guys work long and hard days. But to be there for the Islanders, it's worth it. They have a trust, we have a trust. We feel almost a privilege, not almost, it is a privilege, dealing with a lot of these guys. You know, someone that will give you their son and daughter, and you're flying a single engine airplane and you're going, you know, you know, off the main coast. These pilots have a tremendous amount of responsibility and skill with their aircraft. The view of the islands from the plane's window is so beautiful that it's easy to forget that you're in a single engine plane over open water. But when you start the descent into one of the islands, then get your first glimpse of the tiny dirt and gravel airstrip that you're about to land on, you're awfully glad these pilots have the experience that they do. One false move and you could either wind up in the ocean or get blown into a grove of trees. It's their ability as pilots to which the Islanders have trusted their lives, especially on flights like this one, a medevac operation on Matinicus. Yeah, that's okay. a 10-year-old. Yeah, my kids would do the same. Well, Doctor, you pay attention to what you're doing. No, I am. I am. I am. If that's too high, maybe you and I can help hold the airplane down so you can just kind of turn around backwards and sit down. Yeah. Watch your head now, Doctor. Everybody depends on the air. It makes it possible to live out here. Suzanne Rankin is the resident island historian with ancestors who came to Matinicus in the 1700s. And she can't imagine life without the air service. Because there is no reliable boat service. There's no boat service at all in the wintertime. The Maine State Ferry Service comes January, February, if the weather allows. And if they cancel the, the run, they don't necessarily schedule another one. So you, now you have four weeks before you can get milk. So the mail plane is far more than the mail plane. It's really the lifeline. But Tinicus does have a thriving lobstering community, and that means plenty of boats. But it's still a two-hour ride over to the mainland, so they turn to the air service almost as much as everyone else does. You couldn't ask for better pilots, let me tell you, at Penobscot Island Air. <laughs> I love them. They're like a second family. <laughs> Even they can get stranded when bad weather grounds the planes. Winds shifted around from the southwest and now more southeasterly. And here, you know, that just, you know, for the most part adds for fog a low visibility. So for us, since there's no instrument approaches to the runways, they can just kind of put everything on hold. Try again tomorrow. However, in December of 2004, tomorrow didn't come. The air service was run by another company, which ran into financial difficulties, and without warning, the planes were grounded. Business ceased. Absolutely no business. No people came, no people left, no goods were delivered, no mail was delivered, no packages, nothing. Okay, George. At that time, Kevin was working for the company that okay. suspended the service, so he felt he had to do something. He wasn't going to um, just sit back and do nothing. That he, he said to his boss, how can you do this? You, you just left them flat. And he said, well, I, I can do it. And I did do it. And by the way, you're fired. And a lot of people came up and wanted to know what was needed. And basically, we were told that money was the starting point. We had a meeting in the evening, and the situation was outlined to us. This is, this is what's happened. Everybody had their little purse. And, 
you know, $5, $10, $100. We don't know who gave what. It was just collected in an envelope. Combining their resources with the other islands in need of air service, they managed to raise about $17,000 with no strings attached. And that was enough to get Kevin's new business off the ground. It's unbelievable. You know, I still, to this day, get emotional about it. And, uh, you know, that's why, you know, the folks, people can say what they want, but uh, pretty unique crew out there. <laughs> God love yeah. you. And to be sure, the Islanders feel the same way about Kevin and all his pilots. He has reciprocated and helped us in, in, in tremendous ways, and we'll never be able to repay him for, for what he did for us. It's fantastic. A baby born in the county, county. Jumping on the bed, going bouncy, bouncy. Going to church on Sunday, going to school on Monday. Saturdays it's Bugs Bunny on TV. Yeah, living in the county with her sisters three. I love it. I love flying. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, this is a pretty sweet deal. Not a bad office view.